If I come in here and I'm demonstrating Groovy's um, mop, which is the meta object protocol, this is going to allow me to say, hmm, def word equals rest. And I want to print out all the words that rhyme with that. Well, of course, I'm going to get yelled at. They say there's no signature of rhyme on a string. String doesn't have that native method rhyme yet. Yeah. Every Groovy class, every Java class has an expando meta class that surrounds it. And so if I turn around and add this rhyme method to the meta class of string, I can come back in here and say, what was that address again? The address was this. Only instead of passing the word in, I'm going to pass in the delegate. So in this case, meta class has the rhyme method and string is the delegate. And so when I do something like this, print out word.rhyme, you can see we're going to make that call and we're going to pass it back. So in this case, I'll even just return that twirl text. So in one line here now, when I run this, I now see that whatever word I have in there, I come in here and I want to print Lynn whatever rhymes with Java. Oh, it was going so well. No, 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 please, please. Run. There we go, yeah. So, um, you know, we begin seeing those things come out here. So let's just get Java up there so we can see it and move on. Lava, Java. Yeah? Yeah? So something like this is exactly what Dave Weiner was trying to talk about. Trying to say that these web services should not be high ceremony. These web services shouldn't be anything special at all. These web services should be very ordinary and commonplace and something that we can use without even thinking about. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. So, let's talk a little bit more about this. SOAP is clearly a specification. It was an implementation. There's a specific version of it out there. You're using SOAP 1.0 or 1.1 or whatever version you're using. What we have with REST is more of a set of architectural principles. It's not an implementation. There's no such thing as REST 2.2, right? REST is a set of ideas that we should try to incorporate. So let's explore this a little bit more. The official definition of REST is that it is representational state transfer. How's that for an expensive word, huh? We call those $20 words in the United States. Very expensive words. Representational state transfer. It's funny. What does SOAP stand for? Simple Object Access Protocol. Actually, that definition is officially deprecated. Now, SOAP doesn't stand for Simple Object Access Protocol, just these four letters that sound great together. Yeah, yeah. Why did they deprecate the definition of SOAP? There's nothing simple about SOAP. Exactly. The jokes write themselves, don't they? Yeah, yeah. There's nothing simple about SOAP. But yet we look at REST, which is so simple, and it's got this very complicated name, Representational State Transfer. It's got a very complicated name because this guy gave it to it. This is Dr. Fielding, Roy Fielding. He's one of the fathers of the internet. He's the guy who invented URIs. He's the guy who wrote the original RFC on URIs and URLs. And so in his doctoral dissertation, he coined this phrase, representational state transfer, as a way to identify how this massively distributed, massively fault-tolerant web services could be implemented. Have any of you by chance read his dissertation? Uh, 
some part of it. Some parts of it, yeah. It's actually kind of an enjoyable read, isn't it? Yeah, in his doctoral dissertation, he's quoting Monty Python. Yeah, I mean, he's making jokes in his dissertation. You can see that Rest's most zealous advocates are often called Restafarians. Yeah, so there's a lot of fun in this community as well, not Rastafarians. No, Restafarians as we go along here. But what we end up with is a definition that we can begin looking at. SOAP is a service oriented architecture, an SOA. And we find that it really takes a very RPC, remote procedure call, uh, focus. It's really verb oriented. We're going to call this method, we're going to do this, do this, do this, do this. You'll see examples in just a moment. In fact, rest is a way that you can put together a resource oriented architecture. And we say that it's noun oriented, but really it's object oriented. And as Java programmers, as OO programmers, we should look at these RESTful web services and breathe a great big sigh of relief. Ah, finally. Because RPC is really state of the art COBOL. Yeah? Taking this data and throwing it over the fence and getting transformations and getting it back. You know, we really want to take an object oriented approach to our web services. So here's a hypothetical set of SOAP services. Imagine that this is the WSDL, right, coming down and explaining that, okay, you have the get user method and the add user method and the remove user method. And you ask managers, why do we use SOAP? And they say, well, because it's a standard. Yeah? But if you look at these methods, there's nothing standardized about that. You need to have a WSDL in order to interact with a SOAP service because this service calls it add user but the next service might call it new user or create user or insert user or push user you get the idea right those method names could be anything so with restful web services what we want to do is we want to standardize because if we look back here for a moment is there a user object to find anywhere? No. We see get user and add user and remove user. There's a hint of an object. We can see these are all methods, all verbs, no nouns. And so with RESTful Web Services, what we do is we make it noun oriented. We make it object oriented. We have a resource, a user or a location. And you look at the URL, example.org slash US slash New York slash New York City. If you make an HTTP GET request, like I was doing from my web browser, you type it in your browser, press enter, it's making an HTTP GET, you're going to get the representation of New York City back. Quick, if I wanted to query Krakow, how would I do that? Slash PL location slash PL slash Krakow, right? Yeah? A couple of you are mentioning up there, have you used this web service before? Yeah? No? No? Did you read the WSDL for this web service? No? You mean you just knew how to use it, never having seen the web service before in your life? Absolutely. Because this is the way the web works. We're used to looking at these URLs. This means something specific. Now, of course, we'll get an XML representation back of New York, but we wouldn't have to get an XML representation. It could be a JSON representation, JavaScript object notation. It could be comma-separated values. It could be anything you wanted it to be. But the idea is we're going to make a well-defined HTTP GET and we'll get the representation of New York back. What do you think would happen if you left New York City off the end of that? What would you expect to get back if you just asked for a slash US slash NY? A list of cities. A list of cities in New York, exactly. Once again, you're an expert on this web service. Congratulations. Yeah. You know, you back off New York and you get all the cities in the United States. Back off the United States, you get all the cities in the world. So you can see this is a very natural way of dealing with web services. 